I started the Great American Songbook Foundation about 12 years ago, for, originally for the purpose of preserving the archival materials I'd collected. A lot of things that were in danger of being destroyed that I was able to save, and I have thousands and thousands of artifacts of sheet music and unpublished things, manuscripts, recordings, so the first intention was to find a place to preserve this material because there is no American Popular Songbook Museum. So our goal uh, is to build a museum, which we now have seed money for, several million dollars, thankfully. And perhaps the most important part of what we do with the foundation is our Songbook Academy, where we have annual programs, where we have young people, high school age youths from all over the country, who come and learn about the Great American Songbook, some with aspirations to do it professionally, some not. They come to the music from different places, from musical theater, from jazz, from Frank Sinatra, Billy Holiday, however they discover it. And we have this life-changing week with mentors, Broadway stars, amazing songwriters, everyone who comes to nurture these young people because their discovery of American popular music, classic American music, is truly life-changing for them. And it becomes another uh, part of their musical palette in addition to contemporary music that they hear. And I feel that arts education is one of the fundamental reasons our country has fallen into such disarray. The emotional, political divide is directly related to the loss of the common bond. And so, to me, it is a very holy and important thing to, to sustain. I'm doing one week uh, celebrating the early years up through her MGM period, and then the second week is the later years. And it's two parts of a concert that I put together that I'll be touring next year with large orchestras. But this is the nightclub incarnation of it, which is different. And uh, with multimedia, uh, with the recording of hers that uh, is a private home recording that uh, is one that I would accompany, and uh, uh, it's curated with my point of view, with help from the Garland family and access to the archives, because uh, for many years I was a trustee of the Garland estate. So uh, I want to celebrate because her centennial is, is next year in a way that focuses on what was important to her and the important aspects of the legacy and not being a woman I can sing these songs in a different way and, I, I'm, and I'm not trying to channel her or imitate her or do what she did but evoke a sense of why she is important. Coming up uh, very soon is indeed a tribute to Judy Garland Next year is Judy Garland's centenary, and I wanted to pay tri tribute to her in a different way, because there has been so much focus on the tabloid aspects of Judy Garland's uh, life, and I felt that it's the wrong perspective. Uh, as much as I love uh, Renee Zellweger musical, uh, that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> But there were a number, there were actually over a hundred projects that Judy Garland was supposed to be involved with through the years that didn't happen. And one of them was her involvement in the movie The Barclays of Broadway. And Ira Gershwin and Harry Warren wrote the score with Judy Garland in mind, and then she ended up not doing the picture. And one of the songs they pulled from the film uh, when she was replaced by Ginger Rogers, whose vocal powers were uh, not the same as Judy Garland, was this ballad that to me is sort of an, uh, textually very similar to a lyric that Ira Gershwin wrote six years later, being the man, or five years later, the man that got away. But this is uh, a ballad uh, that is called There Is No Music, and uh, I hope I remember it uh, next up rain sleep, but what the hell. <laughs> Now salty tears glisten on 
night I listen, but there's no 